how can they still come and talk to you and so forth? There was a guy named Scott Moulton who actually was, to my knowledge, the first person to ever have uh, someone come after him legally because of uh, of uh, in mapping. He was uh, actually doing testing. The company was paying him, and he still ended up getting arrested. Mm -hmm. That was a few years back. But if, like, for instance, if you were to go to a coffee shop and start scanning from your coffee shop, I would think there's some terms of service of using their network. Um, I, I run servers in, uh, in, in data centers, and and those don't particularly, they don't, they just don't have agreements for things like that because it's just commonly done. It's commonly done. I need to test what my firewall is, is up and actually working. Um, so scanning from somewhere, you don't necessarily need to hide yourself. If you were here and you're trying to, to connect, you jump on the, the Brown network, scan everything they have, and then disconnect and maybe come back later, come back with another split from another IP address and, and attack from another vector. Or just exploit it as quick as you can and get out. So it, it's it, it kind of fits on where you are, but you have to have a IP address, but you don't have to be on the same network. You just have to have access to those to those IPs. And what you're really trying to figure out is if I'm in Detroit on a server in Detroit and I'm scanning the the Brown Hotel network, what can I see from that point of view? What's accessible from outside? And then when I come in here and I scan them from inside, what's accessible from the inside? And then pivoting becomes the example of what you can come inside and then turn and then get everybody else. Get back out again. Okay. I guess I was trying to figure out how you disassociate the IP you scan with from the IP that you eventually connect with where you do cross that legal boundary. Um, that, would, that would be when you start, when you run MSF console and when you start the exploit, that is specifically attacking someone's uh, other box malicious. Of course, for the sake of this class, we'd only be attacking boxes that we've been hired to penetrate, do a penetration test on. Right, right. But, uh, yeah, I'm just trying to understand the mindset of how you would disassociate those two IDs from each other. So you'd have to switch over to a different network. Well, once you have the in-map doing it fast and finding out what's out there, you can maybe connect through with like a Tor network or I2P or some other like darknet and connect out or possibly move to another coffee shop. If you were so inclined to be black hat. Right. So you just walk down the street. <laughs> but essentially, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Okay. Um, okay. Some of the other stuff. Uh, dash SS, I said the stealth sense scan. SV um, means that when Inmap finds an open port, it's to do a version test on that port. If it finds port 22, it's going to try to figure out which version of SSH is running there. If you're running port 21, it's going to try to figure out which FTP. Usually, if you just connect and say quit, whatever service is running on that port is going to tell you outright what it's running. Um, so it's not... It's like a banner driver or something like that? Exactly. That's exactly what it is. Usually, if you, if you tell bad information to a program, the program will tell you, I am this. And in in the, the logical aspect of, if you thought you were running, talking to an ISS server and you issued a command based on a, a Linux server, the ISS is not going to understand it. And then its error code is going to tell you as a reminder, by the way, I'm Windows, I'm not Linux. Or by the way, I'm uh, OpenSSH or I'm VSFT. Um, okay, so it's going to do the version scan. The uh, next one, dash. O A. This is the difference between Metasploit and Nmap. Um, dash O A tells I want the output, and the A says I want all the output. There are three uh, files that Nmap will create. One is a .nmap, one <coughs> is a .grep, and one is .xml. The uh, XML is the only file that Metasploit will import. So it's the one you care about the most. Um, <clears throat> for me, I just always name the name of the file, the IP address that I'm scanning. So that's what uh, dash is away from our site on display. One and two, one and two, one and All right, dash dash log errors. Um, usually you don't get anything, but if there is something in my script, I want it to go ahead and tell me what it is. And like I said, if I'm running 25 different scans of something, I don't want to I have to go back on my screen to figure out where it is. I want to save the output every single time. Also, maybe cases where I rescan the same IP multiple times. So I append the output. So 
So if it's done on Monday and I scan it again on Wednesday and I scan it again on Friday, I don't overwrite the same data or the old data. Because it may be very interesting if there was no FTP port open on Tuesday and now it is open on Wednesday. Um, the next one. Okay, dash P is the ports that you want to scan. Uh, if you put a capital T and a colon in front of that, then it tells it, I only want to do a TCP scan. In a lot of different cases, depending on what's going on, how you uh, do it, the more verbose the scan, the more Nmap will try TCP, UDP, and ICMP to try to figure out what's going on. For Metasploit, you're basically going to exploit and then get a shell back to you, and then you're going to do something with that shell. That shell is going to re require TCP connection. So I only want to look for TCP ports. I don't really care if there's a UDP port out there. It may be great for something else, but for for actually setting up an interpreter session back to yourself, you have to have TCP, so why not only look for TCP to begin with? Um, and here's where you declare the ports. So 1 through uh, 1024 just says I want to do every, every port in that range, and then you just do commas where you can uh, uh, specifically add other ports if you know you've got an exploit for uh, 1433 or you know that your target always runs a uh, internal proxy on uh, 2222 or something like that. Um, then the uh, last line is randomized hosts and the uh, two targets that you might want to run against. Randomized hosts um, takes any uh, targets that you're going to, and then just alternatively picks one and does it. Um, for this particular uh, scan where you're declaring so many decoys, I really suggest that you don't scan an entire subnet because with this, you're going to create seven times the amount of traffic because of the extra decoy traffic. Uh, but I wanted to put randomized hosts in just to give you an idea that um, if, you're, if you've got a whole collection of IP addresses that you want to, to go through, you just got them out of a, a grab bag out of a box, you don't really know where to, where to, step, where to start or stop. Um, and if someone is looking at you on the other side and you have an, a, a perfectly numerated list of connections, then it's going to be much more obvious when somebody looks at the logs to say one was scanned, then two was scanned, then three was scanned, then four was scanned. If you just totally mix it up, it's going to be much, much harder for anyone to put together what you're doing. Um, okay, for Nmap, any questions about the switches options or anything? In case somebody is wondering, uh, we're currently booting the XP box. Another exploit is hitting something. Yeah, things crash, things go kablooey. So we'll be booting it so people, if they want to try some of the attacks, hopefully it'll be back up shortly. Sorry, go ahead. All right. Um, okay. Inside, inside the Metasploit, the command to import a file name. So if you're if you're doing your own nmap command, you do uh, dash oa and you declare the output. Then here is where you can import that. So it's just a simple command: db underscore import underscore nmap underscore xml, and then the uh, file name. A couple things uh, to remember: nmap only, nmap only does the host and the ports. And for instance, like I said, I love to see the trace route. Metasploit doesn't include the trace route in what it imports. There's some other little extra information, such as uh, Nmap tries to guess the operating system, and it uh, will sometimes give you a percentage guess of what it thinks the operating system is. Uh, Metasploit, for the most part, doesn't import any of that. If it does import something, then it throws it into DB nodes. Only if you import an Nmap scan do you get anything in DB nodes. If you run Nmap from inside Metasploit, it doesn't put anything there with the exact same options. So here is the uh, Nmap command, which, as you can see, it starts with DB underscore Nmap. If you're inside MFS console, and you run the command this way, and I put the, it's the exact same options as before. But if you run db underscore nmap, then Metasploit will spawn the nmap, it'll do the scan for you, and it will import everything and put it into its database of hosts, 
without having to do the, the extra stuff.